We're speaking with Dr. Jordan Metzger, the curator of the Massey Herbarium at Virginia Tech. Dr. Metzger, what can you tell us about the discovery of the giant hogweed in Virginia? So one population of the plant has been discovered in Virginia so far. This was up in Clark County, uh, up near Winchester. So um, a new uh, landowner moved into the area and found a population of the plants um, near her house and contacted the local Master Gardeners Club. Um, and they looked at it and thought it might be giant hogweed. So they talked to their local extension agent who talked to some weed specialists at Virginia Tech. And uh, they turned to me for identification help and we were able to confirm that it was giant hogweed growing there. So this is the first uh, population of the plant documented for Virginia. And there's about 30 plants growing there so far. We were able to establish that a, a previous landowner had planted the plants in the 70s as uh, ornamental species. So they haven't spread very much in the, in the last 30 or 40 years, um, but we'd like to make sure that they're eradicated before they pose any kind of problem or start spreading across more of the state. So based on what you've told us, does that in your mind tell you that this is an isolated incident and there's really no need to fear about it spreading? Um, if you look at the history of giant hogweed, it's been present in the United States for about 100 years. It was brought over from Southwest Asia for the same reason as an ornamental. And it didn't spread much until about 20 years ago. And since then, it's started to colonize uh, more of the U.S., mainly the northeastern U.S. and a little bit in the Pacific Northwest. So we're a little bit warm for it here. Uh, so, so far, it seems like this sighting in Clark County is probably a pretty isolated incident. Everyone's on the lookout for it now, so maybe we'll find a few more populations. But uh, for the most part, it seems like this is present in Virginia at a very low level. So it's not something people need to uh, be panicked about or especially worried about. Tell us a little bit more about the dangers of the giant hogweed. So the hogweed is mostly dangerous because of its sap. So it has chemicals called furocumarins in the sap. And if you get that sap on your skin when you're out in the sunlight, you can develop a painful rash or burn. So those chemicals um, are activated by the sunlight. Um, so if you're out and you hike through a patch of this or you mow through a patch of this in your yard, and you get the sap um, on yourself, you'll need to uh, start washing yourself uh, with soap and water very quickly and try to stay out of the sunlight. It's activated by UV radiation. So if you're in the sun or if you go to a tanning booth um, for a couple days after exposure, you can develop these burns from the, from the plant's sap. Why is it necessary for those who spot the plant to report this to authorities? So giant hogweed is classified as a noxious weed in the state of Virginia. Um, so as far as transporting it or planting it, those are both illegal without permission. And as far as just reporting what you've seen, right now we only know of the one population in the state. The plants can reproduce very quickly though. A single plant can produce 20,000 seeds in a year. So it has the potential to spread very quickly. So if you do see it, um, it's important to let authorities know so that the site can be um, contained and dealt with before it spreads further. Okay. So along those lines, warnings have now been issued for people not to mow or to cut the weed or whack the plant. Why, why is that and what will happen if they do? Um, all of those activities are likely to release the sap into the air. Um, you can think of, of how, uh, how violent weed whacking is. So if you go out there with a weed eater and take out a patch of this, you'll likely wind up covered in this sap. And if the sun's out, you'll quickly develop severe burns um, anywhere you have exposed skin. So it's important to um, avoid breaking up the plant like that or aerosol, aerosolizing it um, so that it's spreading over your body. Basically think about what would happen if you went out and uh, tried to take a weed eater to a patch of poison ivy. The aftermath would be pretty painful and in this case it would potentially be even more severe. So what is it important for people to know should they find a plant that in their mind looks like the giant hogweed? What should they do? Well, they shouldn't panic immediately. Um, they should remember that right now we only know of one population of giant hogweed in the entire state of Virginia. So across all of Virginia, we only know of about 30 plants right now. So if you do find something that looks like giant hogweed, odds are that it's not. It's probably um, the closely related species cow parsnip, which is a native wildflower that gets quite large and has sap that can cause a rash, but isn't quite as big or doesn't have quite as severe a rash as giant hogweed. So the most important thing is to try to identify it and see whether you have giant hogweed or cow parsnip. There's some nice photo guides online that help with identification. And then once you um, have done that, if you still think you have giant hogweed, it's important to take some detailed photos of it 
and contact your local extension agent and they can take a, um, an expert opinion at it and see um, if this is something you should be concerned about. So giant hogweed is classified as a noxious weed in the state of Virginia. Um, so as far as transporting it or planting it, those are both illegal without permission. And as far as just reporting what you've seen, right now we only know of the one population in the state. The plants can reproduce very quickly though. A single plant can produce 20,000 seeds in a year. So it has the potential to spread very quickly. So if you do see it, um, it's important to let authorities know so that the site can be um, contained and dealt with before it spreads further. Okay. So along those lines, warnings have now been issued for people not to mow or to cut the weed or whack the plant. Why, why is that and what will happen if they do? Um, all of those activities are likely to release the sap into the air. Um, you can think of, of how, uh, how violent weed whacking is. So if you go out there with a weed eater and take out a patch of this, you'll likely wind up covered in this sap. And if the sun's out, you'll quickly develop severe burns um, anywhere you have exposed skin. So it's important to um, avoid breaking up the plant like that or aerosol, aerosolizing it um, so that it's spreading over your body. Basically think about what would happen if you went out and uh, tried to take a weed eater to a patch of poison ivy. The aftermath would be pretty painful, and in this case it would potentially be even more severe. Right. All right, Dr. Jordan Mesker of Virginia Tech, thank you very much. Sure.